Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. What is going on with... Oh, there we go. The overlays have been a bit freaky there. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope we're all having a good day. I've done basically nothing today. I've had a lazy as shit day, but I'll tell you what. It's been quite nice. I've got very low energy. Incre I don't know what it is, but my energy is just, like, gone at the moment. Like, I've got nothing. I'm on nothing. I've basically sat about trying to get world versus world. I this world versus world thing, guys, is mental. It really is. I don't know. I may have to give... I never give up. I don't like giving up. I might have to give up on this one. Oh, I haven't advertised this in any respect today's stream. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, uh, let me at least tell the people on Discord. I don't really feel very comfortable advertising just random world completion stuff, because I know that it's kind of a bit eh. I wouldn't want to advertise and then someone comes to see it and gets like a poo opinion of the whole thing. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but let's see here. Um... There we go. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, I, uh, I, this world versus world thing. Let's quickly nip to the gameplay for a second here. It's ridiculous. I mean, it really, really, really is. I just, uh, the, the knowledge that I have 16 more weeks of this and it's so much time. Uh, it's, it's dawning on me. I think it probably dawned on a lot of other people a lot quicker how challenging this was. But I mean, doing this and then also wanting to be productive and also wanting to put out like arena stuff. I just don't know whether it's worth it. It's, it's, it's almost definitely not, but I just, I feel emasculated, guys, if I don't manage to get, I need all the legendaries. If I don't get them all, I'm not a good player. I don't know. I just don't get it. I don't know what I should do. I don't know. But this week I've, I've got to about here. So, before I have very real misgivings about this, I ended up with 810 out of 2,800. So, I'm 800 out of 2,000. Nice link in Discord. Did I mess up the Discord link? Did I mess up the Discord link? No, I didn't mess up the Discord link. Why did you put a kappa there? Oh, because I linked to my videos, not to the actual stream. Oh, well. Well, regardless. Well, why don't you decide to do double the time you're giving yourself? Well, because... <laughs> the longer it... I mean, here's the thing. It, I, I'm all up for challenging difficult things that take a long time. Whether it's a skill, skill challenge or a time challenge. I'm fine with that. But there is a point where it's like, that is so far in the future. I, I mean... It just feels wholly unrewarded. When, when, the, when the progress you can make each week is one thirty tooth of the entire journey per week. I mean, I'm I'm just not that kind of person. I just don't, there's not there's nothing gratifying about that to me. Do you know what I mean? If I get into a TV show, I can't and it's 32 episodes long. I couldn't watch one episode every week for 32 weeks straight. Fuck that. And at least you get some reward out of each episode. This is the same thing every week. The reward is nothing until the end, really. Except the prees, but I don't care enough about those. So it's like it's just, uh, there's a point where the timescales get too long, do you know what I mean? And that, that's what I think um, that puts me off from doing that. But also the other side of that is... Uh, um, I, I, the expansion, man, the expansion. If we're talking 32 weeks... Guys, let's put that into perspective. That's like two-thirds of a year, isn't it? It's like... Three-fifths of a year or something like that. It's mental, right? We're talking, the expansion will be out by then. And I don't know. I like the idea of getting all the Heart of Thorns associated back pieces. I mean, this is, I'm not streaming today just to whine about this. I'm not saying it's badly designed either, by the way, for what it's worth. I like it. I think it's really good. I think it's great for those people who do purely play World vs. World. For them, they're getting satisfaction out of the, the regular experience. And it's a doddle, really. And I, that's all cool. So it's just, it's just my personal circumstance right now. Like, if I didn't have anything to do, if I wasn't meant to be making videos, if I wasn't pushing myself to get more series and things out... Uh, yeah, I wouldn't give a shit. Fine, waste my life away doing this. But uh, it's 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 this week I've started to think, should I go for it? I don't know. You'll probably, knowing me, you'll probably see me next week and I'll still be grinding on it. Because the sunk cost fallacy and I have no respect for boundaries in terms of too long challenges and things. But hey. Well, we've only got 100 viewers at the moment because we literally just turned the stream on. Mill tank. We only just turned it on like a second ago. 
So people will take a while to roll in. Also, this is a completely unadvertised stream and probably uh, a fairly uninteresting one as well because we're, we're going to be doing some um, uh, world comp. Uh, so yeah, anyway, yeah, that, that, that's basically it. I'll wait three minutes for the next tick and then we will go do some more map completion. I didn't get any Ascalon stuff done last night at all. Uh, like I said, I've mostly been pissing about with this, playing a bit more Crash. Some of those Crash levels are really hard. It's a hard game, but it's very, very satisfying to get through. Um, and yeah, so I did want to show you guys one thing. Now, I'm sure that... Ex have we got any super experienced world versus worlder in chat at the moment? Oh no, WP deciphered my nickname. What, Miltank? Is in, you're, what is it, after the Pokemon, is it? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't think that, that was a secret. You'll be happy. Then, yeah, but being happy at the end of the grind doesn't mean that it was actually worth the time. Do we have a single decent world versus worlder? A single one? So if you are a decent world versus worlder, out of this very small sample size we have here. Um, I shouldn't say that. Other streams, Guild Wars streams, would only dream of being here. Oh, what? what? Anyway, look. It, does any super experienced world versus worlder know an excellent hidey spot to AFK around here? Right around the various sentries, dollies, even pretty close distance to the scouts. Does anybody know a really good hiding spot right here? An excellent one. Let's see. All you have to do is type yes. Obviously, it's the internet and you can lie, I suppose. So I don't know why I'm having this conversation with you. Royal says yes, there's a shrine. Well, no, no, no. I will give you guys the best world versus world hiding spot. And I know that people will know this, by the way. I'm, I'm not asking chat to vindicate my belief that I am the first one to find this at all. I just, I'm just curious whether anyone here already knows about this. People will know about this, but it's very, very cool. I found it the other day, right? Uh, not the other day, yesterday. So I used to stand on top of this, Carver's Ascent, and flip it to my color. And sometimes that would lure people over and then you can kill them and you can get more points. What's more interesting, though, is letting those random people just roam around flipping the sentries and you just hide somewhere so they can't kill you. So I was, like, trying various little things, like, where's a good hidey spot, right? So I was thinking maybe I can come around on these. I was thinking maybe I can climb up this. But then you get, like, longbow four rangers who will just knock you off from down below and, and laugh and have a wank because they think it's that amazing. They get incredibly hard over it. Uh, you've also got, um, it, when you come to the top, you can drop down here and you can land here and rarely you'll be seen but you can still be shot there's also um this wall's pretty interesting this one's by design so i have a bit more respect for it you can come up this and the only way up is this route along this whole wall this is the only way along here and you can actually go all the way along so if i'm stood here and someone tries to get to me they have to go all the way around they do there's no other way up and it ends on this pretty luscious little platform here Again, the only way up is to go all the way around. And you can put your back to this as well. And it's a barrier, so you can't even be CC'd over the cliff or anything. So this is an interesting place, but obviously pretty out in the open. And then I found it, guys. I found the dream. So eventually I was like, oh, what about the tunnel? I wonder if, you know, the tunnel's dark. People don't go into it too often. What if I can, like, hide in a corner in the tunnel, like, here or something? Maybe people wouldn't see me. It's all a little bit open. It's all, you know, it's, it's all... The geometry is very plain. Then, then I found it. Here is the hiding spot. It's in the tunnel. Oh, do you know what? Hiding... Oh, I thought that that was a, a walkway there with that led nowhere. I thought if you could get on that, that'd be amazing. Here, here's the dream, right? It's in the tunnel. Oh. Oh, what's that? Oh. Oh, hello. Hello. There you go. That's the stream for today. That's how to world versus worlds. Let the rewards roll in. Anger your server by not contributing to the skirmish. Reap the rewards, baby. And there you go. This is literally what I do now. If you are against Crystal Desert, come on over in the next matchup to the Northern Shiver Peaks Alpine Borderlands and check this hole for free kills on me because this is where I always stood. <laughs> As much as humanly possible. And then all you do, just FYI for the minimap, all you do is people will flip this, and every now and then you just duck out and reflip one of those. Or if nobody's done that, you can come up here, or you can get the ghosts or whatever, and then you just come back in. But it's like two seconds away from the sentry, right? Ideally, you have someone flipping this sentry. Flip it, and then you turn around and come back. Ink says, hmm, that is a good spot now. I know where to find you. Yeah, and so this is what I've been doing. It'd be cool if you could climb even higher up, like if there was a, you know, if you could get up there a bit. But yeah, this is where I've been stood.
And uh, that's my world versus world experience so far. All right, we got three minutes. Look, I'm gonna get one more tick in, and then, uh, and then, oh, it's just, oh, what do I do, guys? Should I give this up? <sighs> Should I be a failure? Is this the start? Because here's what always worries me about stuff like this. I feel like it's the start of me slipping out of touch. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I need this black piece to be able to be online and talk about stuff. And have at least some, like, respect from people or some reason why. Because if you don't have accomplishments in the game, why why listen to you? Do you know what I mean? And I mean, I've got a backlog, a d demonstrable backlog of eight years of experience in the franchise and getting rewards and stuff. And I suppose that counts for something. And I have some knowledge in the different areas of the game. But I feel like, you know, the second I stop going for the rewards, that that's, that's I'm slipping out of touch then. It's like, what? You know, one day they'll come a day. Hey, look, someone on the stream came in. One day, he's on our team. Uh, one day, you know, people will be like, why are we even listening to WP? He doesn't have the back piece. One day, oh, everyone's going to have that back piece. And I'll still be sitting here going, nah, I only have 700, 800 tickets. Danmark DK keeps saying you've got to stick with him, man. I feel like you're giving me bad advice here. Let me put it another way. You guys are the viewers. If I stick with this, it is actually hurting the content you get to watch. It's like, do you want an arena LP and the magical, beautiful open world of the Elder Scrolls on the channel? Or should I, or do you want a random YouTube video sometime four months down the line where I may or may not be wearing the World vs. World Legendary back piece? Right, that's the trade-off for you guys, the audience. You shouldn't be encouraging me to do this, not really. Yeah, <laughs> look at everyone saying you've got to stick with it. Ink says I've never made it to Diamond, I get to Mithril. Mithril one or two every week. Oh, see, that stings more, right? Actually just going, like, not the full hog. Yeah, imagine that matchup ends and you're on, like, Mithril 5, for example, or something. That would really sting. Who will know that you have the back piece anyway? Well, if I do an account tour, a 2018 account tour, or 2017 account tour, whatever the next one would be. the H.O.T. Uh, music in the background. I don't remember it ever playing Heart of Thorns. That is Heart of Thorns music, isn't it? I think it is. So here, like, if the sentry isn't flipped, another thing you could do is just go get either of these two Dolly X. It's interesting, the wildlife's fighting over there. I thought they turned that off because they didn't like the uh, marginal lag they added to the map. <laughs> <clears throat> Just imagine the backpack on your back and think, is it worth it or not? Uh, that's not really the point to me. It's about the... Um... Oh, this guy's Scepter, so we can probably beat him. I, uh, it's not about that. It's about the prestige. We do have to cleanse that confusion there, though. I don't change my opinion one bit just because you don't have one special piece. You'll still you'll still be WP. Ah, oh, Januard. Ah, oh, I don't know. It's my neurosis. It's my issue. It's my thing. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Anyway, let's go do world completion. We got our tick while we were fighting that guy. I won't stomp him or anything. Let him live. If he, oh, fine. If he's gonna kill himself. Uh, yeah. Back to the NG, I guess. Bye bye world versus world. Um, and we'll do this. And today, guys, seriously, we're not gonna act. We're, we're not even in a tongue in cheek, jokey way. We're not gonna judge other people. We're not gonna critique other people's movie tastes, chair choices, deep, deep kebab choices, trouble. or what was that other thing we were talking? Or or <laughs> make any commentary on whether it's a positive or negative thing having uh. <laughs> religious schooling institutions for children below the age of 11. <laughs> Which is, uh, if you guys missed it, all the lovely stuff that came up yesterday. Yeah. Is it that some people form the silly opinion that you can't legit talk about certain content because it's not your mainstay? I get that a lot. 
Uh, yeah, I think that that is a problem. Um, and I, I only rub up against that with the world versus world side of Guild Wars 2. Um, I, and I, it's not just because I'm on the defensive. I would say this about any part of the game. I think that if you're, if you are new to an area of the game, you do have a valid opinion. Um, there are obviously some areas of discussion you can't broach, but you're more than welcome to say what turns you off something in the early days. I think that that's perfectly fair, right? Um, and if I didn't, and that's not that I'm not just saying that like, oh, you can't, you can't question my world versus world. If, if I, if I, I genuinely do believe that. And that's why I think that, um, stuff like the leveling experience is so important to be reassessed because I think that obviously, um, it's not all about pandering to your existing user base that might have managed to grit their teeth through some shitty experiences or not even had those shitty experiences because they've only manifested after a few years of other changes going through slipping under. Like spirit shards, right? Like I've never experienced any kind of challenge or, or anything notable about spirit shards at all while new accounts now do. So as a veteran, I don't have a good opinion about spirit shards unless I force myself into an experience like I do on these streams here. So I think that, yeah, I, th I think... Uh, uh, a range of experiences are your opinion is valid the only people i would say who have completely invalid like totally invalid exp um opinions generally on guild wars stuff are people who don't like mmos at all or don't like video games at all do you know like you presumably if you're on a, if you're on an mmo stream on twitch you're probably you're sweet to, to leave your opinions right but um I think that, you know, that that's the point where you have absolutely no say when you don't know what, you, you know, you haven't played an MMO for any moment of your entire life. And now you're coming in and trying to trying to talk about what's good or bad about leveling and stuff. And it's like, I don't know. But even, even then to an extent, you know, if someone's never played an MMO, they come, they try Guild Wars 2 and they leave in five minutes. Is their reason for that fair, or are they just so far removed from the demographic that ArenaNet are going for that we shouldn't listen to them? I think that's the kind of stuff's really interesting. I reckon it'd be really interesting to work um, as like the dude that organizes playtests and stuff, and like surveys people and figures out who's who comes to playtests and how you disseminate audience feedback. What's what's? Oh look, the shatter is up. Is he actually going to die? I wonder how low he is. Well, this is some Gamescom 2010 experience we're getting here, guys. This is beautiful. The game's probably a bit loud. Sorry, I'm turning it down a bit. Have I already played the Crash Insane trilogy? Yeah, that's what I've been talking about on the recent streams. I, I've, I haven't gone into Crash... So my experience as a kid, I gave quite a cool story, I think, anyway. Of, uh, the, of my experience playing Crash 1 and Crash 3 when I was younger. Crash, uh, of which I played quite a lot of. And Crash 3 specifically, I like 100% or 120%ed, 140%ed back in the day. I got every platinum relic. I got, uh, you know, I unlocked that secret extra area in the middle of the uh, the hub world. I, I did that thing. Coco gives you the last gem in the game and all that stuff in Crash 3 Warps back at, uh, when I was a lot younger. Um, but I have a huge amount of stature for 1 and 3. Two, I never played very much. Anyway, so as an adult, yeah, I'm playing the Crash Insane trilogy right now. I still haven't quite finished Prey, so I'm trying to get the good ending on Prey. And then once that's gone, I'll be playing Nier Automata. But in the meantime, I'm, I, I have played a little bit of Crash Insane trilogy. I'm on, uh, I'm on the last island on Crash 1 at the moment. I haven't played Crash 2. I haven't played Warped of the remakes. I haven't played either of those. But I'm on... Uh, and the game's so hard. I'm not going to platinum this game. It's so hard. It's like getting those colored gems, got to complete the entire level and not die. It's mental. And get all the boxes. It's really tra challenging. I just completed a notoriously difficult level called the High Road. Which, if you search Crash Insane Trilogy online, it's mostly just people bitching about that. Wow, we had a couple of overlays there. Sorry, guys. Let's see what just happened. We had Cheesington. Cheesington, always good to see your name, dude. And Kairos, it's good to see yours too. Ten months. Titanic sucks. Ha ha ha. Oh, you make me cry. You make me cry. You make me cry. Well, thank you very much for your opinion there. Look, we've tagged the boss. Should we be really sleazy and just leave? And I particularly want to do this because I remember back in 2010, um, one of the devs was asked this in an interview. What stops me just tagging it and walking off? And they were like, no, we'll have scale and stuff. That allow and they also explained that you could spend the entire time doing non-combat activities and still get gold. 
And then that wasn't a thing for years. It was only around Heart of Thorns came out that they started adding healing NPCs and things into the scaling uh, things for events. Do you guys remember that? Oh, you talk about Crash 1. The high road is one of my favorites. I gathered all the gems multiple times, and I can agree it's pretty painful. The balance in the first game isn't that good. Yeah, there's a lot of weird things about Like, the whole, like, lives mechanic is like, oh, you don't want to run out of lives, but it feels really arbitrary why you don't want to run out of lives. You don't want to run out of lives. It will give you four back, but the point is that you're going to get kicked out of the level, and you're going to get forced to watch a cutscene every four lives from then on. So you should go grind on this auto-save glitch thing. I don't know. There's just weird stuff about it that you can tell is a bit odd and doesn't exactly work. And, like, the game does... Tune Naughty Dog have always been really good at this. They tune their experience. If you fail a lot on their experiences, and this isn't Naughty Dog, but obviously it inherits the Naughty Dog design. Um, they tune their experiences to become easier if you fail on them a lot. So Crash 1 does that as well. They were doing that in the very first days, way back with Crash 1. So what happens is if you die... It will give you an extra hit, right? It will give you an Aku Aku mask if you die enough times, like eight times on a level. Every time you respawn, it will give you that mask. And then if you die like 20 times on a level, it will give you two extra hits. It will give you the tier two Aku Aku, which also means you'll become invincible if you find a single other one on the on the level. So like, and that's cool, but it absolutely means nothing because like 99% of all deaths in Crash Bandicoot 1 are full damage deaths. They've got nothing to do with the enemies, it's full damage. And the mask doesn't save you from that. And so there's just weird, like, artifices. Do you know what I mean? There's just weird stuff like that. Listen, guys, we have to do this stealth thing. I don't know what to tell you, but we're going to do it. So, yeah, we got the Ash Legion heart thing. We may as well start here while we're rambling about other stuff. Anyone else always here near a tomato? Oh, near or tomato. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can, I can pick that. I can detect that. Yeah, Philanor says, sure, but it was one of the first games released on PS1. Yeah, I know. I know it's an old game. It's excusable. It's an old game. It's, it's interesting to look back at, though. It's not a criticism. It's, well, it's a criticism through today's lens. And the remaster's decision to go completely purist and leave it exactly as it is, which has its own benefits. But I'm not saying it's a bad game. There's no buts in this to me. It's just the way the game is. Anyway, Crash 3 was fucking awesome, and I can't wait to get to it. I never played much of Crash 2, so I don't know how I'll feel when I get there on the remaster. But we'll see. Uh, where is the heart? I th Isn't this the heart? Did we go through here? Oh my god, did you guys hear that? Did you guys hear the Shatterer from all this distance away? I did not know that was a thing. That's really cool. Why didn't they do that with other world bosses? Arena Net. This was the first map you made. Well, second map you made. And you had a really good idea. Why didn't you do that elsewhere? Does the Shadow Bimoth do that? What do you think about the theory that Ritlock ascended while he was in the mist? It depends if how def definite they go into talking about what ascension is in this, in this game. But yeah, I think it could be cool. It's a nice idea. You've mentioned you don't want Kanak in Dragon's Watch. Would you ever want him in there at any point? He can come along for random little romps every now and then, but there has to be a good reason for him to do it. Like, he was obviously a massive plus. I'm, I'm kind of annoyed here. How do we get to where I want to be? He was obviously a massive plus for Heart of Thorns, right? Find me someone who's not a miserable mouth breather. But, oh, God. It's very rare for someone to be like, Kanuk was shit. Kan you know, Kanuk's... Mostly... Mostly. I got really... Uh, my description there was, was supposed to be a little bit cheeky, but it ended up really, really angry. But, um... Mostly people loved Kanak in Heart of Thorns. Didn't they? Kanak was awesome. Right? So, I think that he was an obvious asset to Heart of Thorns. And more John DiMaggio, is the better. And, um... Yeah, I think that, um... I think he's a great character, but... I think where that character shines isn't being a sheep following a group around all the time i think it is being a bit independent and i think it is skirting the boundaries of morality and i think it is uh doing things we might consider a little bit unethical and finding his own path and i like to have it see him have his own adventure i think season three right for all its faults with how it did bram and marjorie defecting and now kanak leaving and people not wanting to join our guild for all of those those facets of the story I actually have a huge amount of respect for Season 3 for having the characters 
act as on their own ambitions and with their own motivations. I think that they, they really nailed that. And that is not lost on me, that there was a very definite attempt from the devs to do that. And I think that's great. I really do. Um... So, uh, so yeah, I, th I think that um, Kana can come back every now and then, but if they just hand wave it like, oh, Anise told me to come, all right, hi. I, I, I didn't like the way they did that in Heart of Thorns, even though he was a great part of Heart of Thorns. I don't think his reason for coming was good enough, right? Edgy, how is Kanak edgy? What are you talking about? What is edgy to you? A guy talking about how he knows what severed, decapitated heads are, dropping that casually in conversation. If that's not edgy to you, I don't know what your frame of reference is, I don't know what you're expecting from an ultimately PG game. You just want to see the Bram get slapped by the commander for whining. So what was it? Last time we were here on the stream... We had, like, a, a great technique, didn't we? Weren't we just pressing F on the same flag over and over? Weren't we? Was it this? Were we just standing here and pressing F and we would never get caught? Was it this? Edgy is having an iPhone two seconds before anyone else. Yeah, Inks is right there, I think. If Brown was human, I don't think there'd have anything wrong with his character. I agree. I see so many people writing or t saying these impassioned rants in defense of Bram and the writing there. Um, and they'll type so much and they'll go on and on and on about Bram. And fundamentally, every single one of them doesn't get it. That the point is, it's not, it's not a cult. It, like, they'll be like, oh, I lost my parents when I was young, so I, I, I really like this, blah, blah, blah. It's like, that's fine, I understand. You went through something really rough, and you like to see a video game showing that story, and and you can uh, you can see why Bram is acting the same way that you did back then, and, you know, I, I get that, and that's nice that you've got an outlet for that, but this was not the character to do it. You are a human being within Western Earth, right? You're a human. This is a Norn. This does nothing to celebrate what the Norn is supposed to be. And that's what Gildas who solely needs to do. You can't take your essentially one main Norn character and, and treat him like a human in the way that they did. Let alone one of the wo of Wolf. Like, let alone. Anyway, I, uh, so it's, it's a shame when I see that. And I'll defend the decision... To shake things up and make Bram go off on his own. And I'll, I'll, I'll defend the decision to make his mother's death a big plot point. And uh, I'll defend the potential that, that, you know, there could be some cool Norn uprising. And I'll defend that this is actually really cool Jeopardy. And I'll, I'll even defend that they know a lot of us won't agree with him. And that they're playing into that. And that's all great writing. That's all brilliant. All of that's fine. You know, it's a topic that's got lots of different sides to look at, right? There are many facets. It's a bit like us, guys. It's multifaceted, this issue, right? And and I'll defend a lot of it, but that specifically, and it's a big sticking point, that was bad writing. That was not understanding your own world building. That was not adhering on any level to expectations that they could have. And it's a shame. Kanak's cool to me. He's certainly not edgy. Kanak doesn't give a fuck. Edgy characters take themselves too seriously. I think you're just p splitting hairs over your your own like little definition there of what edgy might be. But sure, I guess. I'll tell you a movie I might anger some people. So you know people that are quite often saying, Hey, wooden potatoes, you watch anime? Mm. Are you into anime, wooden potatoes? Oh my god. People ask me that quite often and I'm always like, no, I don't really watch much anime. I've watched like Pokemon, Digimon, Beyblade, Code Geass, uh, Baka, that one about a train, I can't even remember. A lot of Studio Ghibli movies and that's about it. That's my experience with anime and it always disappoints people. I actually watched an anime movie with my girlfriend three nights ago and I didn't like it very much. Now listen, before I tell you what the movie is, I just want to be clear that it was beautiful. The artistry, the animations, the the, 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 the compositions of the shots, everything about it was incredible. It was gorgeous and the sound design was amazing and the soundtrack was amazing. From a technical standpoint, this thing was 
incredible. Massive hard-ons all round for it. I understand it. But the story was god off. Well, it wasn't god or It was mediocre. It was a mediocre movie that was like acting like it had some really dramatic, incredible point, And it just didn't. It was a movie that like treated itself as though it was expecting you to be crying your eyes out maybe once every 20 minutes and you just wouldn't be. Unless, I don't know, you got your 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 constitution is fairly different from mine. But the movie was... I wonder if anyone can guess what the movie is based on what I just said. The movie was... Wolf Children. Wolf Children. It was alright. It was alright. And I get what the movie was going for. But I hate movies that do that. That like, they're not that great. That You know, they're not that cutting edge they don't have anything that profound to say it's an interesting you know like slice of life fit watch of this family that's going through something really interesting but they treat themselves like they're these like epic poems and romances and stuff and they're just kind of not but it was all right all the other stuff was amazing so overall it was like it was an all right movie wouldn't really choose to watch it only anime i've seen is Corey in the house I also watched an episode of South Park once where they all became anime characters. Does that count, guys? Does that count? WP actually has good taste. I don't think that's fair. You can't take a novice for a specific area of media who's just watched a bunch of things that other people ultimately have recommended them and say, oh, you've got good taste. Maybe I hated all those things I saw. I thought they were right. Let's fighting love. Yeah, Rod. Hell yeah. High five. Redeemed. Our butting of heads on topics the past 24 hours has been re redeemed over our mutual love of this South Park episode. I know you guys might be watching this and think, fuck, this is slow. But honestly, I'd rather do this than stress myself out avoiding the guys. Did I watch Redline for the podcast? Yeah, that was that racing one, right? Yeah. I mean, there's probably loads of things that I have watched. They were just so uninteresting to me or unremarkable to me that I've forgotten them. Redline was really interesting the way, uh, as far as I remember, it had a really interesting art style to it. But a pretty junk foodie movie as far as I remember. In one ear, out the other. Literally, if I went back and listened to that podcast where we talked about that movie after we watched it, I, I, I would surprise every word that would come out of my mouth would surprise me. It's that's really by the way, guys. If you ever if you watch like I'm obviously I'm not the only person you watch online. There's going to be other people for other games and other stuff, right? If you've ever wondered like one thing that those of us who do this are experiencing that some of you that you, that you if you don't do anything creatively like this you miss out on, it's that. I would really recommend that. You keep like an audio diary or, or just a diary or a journal or something like that because there's nothing crazier than speaking passionately or enthusiastically about something and then completely forgetting every single part of it and then going back like five years later and being like, holy shit, that was me. Wow. You know that feeling you get when you look at a really old picture of yourself on a holiday that you'd almost forgotten or something? Not that I really, you, you get what I mean, right? Um, it's like that. It's really, really, really cool. And scary as well. Alright, there we go. We're actually 99% done with Blaze Ridge, which is astounding to me. I did not think we'd be that close. So what is it we're missing from Blaze Ridge now? We've got 10, 10, one more heart, apparently. And the heart is, it's guiding us to this scout. So, what is Dagon Shun a heart? The heretic, the heretic plane? Hmm. Smitsky says no, I just watch you on Twitch. That's really lovely. I'll tell you, if you if you want to watch some I shouldn't do this, I should hoard you all and I should be greedy and I should take you in my arms like some bastard. But if you are gonna watch some other people, it, the best thing you can do on Twitch, I think, is by the way, I did make a squad. I didn't tell anyone and nobody has joined. If you wanna do map completion with me, you can join this squad. Um if you wanna if you want go to like the little streams on Twitch. They're so cool. It's so awesome to go to the little streams. Go to people that like, you know, they, 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 you know, they, they, they fought, they, I don't know what I'm trying to say. They'd love having more than 20 viewers, right? Go to people like that. Because you can get, it's really fun. And they deserve it. Well, as long as they obviously put some effort in. If it's some guy with no, with no camera, 
No microphone. No even in-game audio. And he's, he's, you know, he's got, it's all messed up, then fine, screw that guy. But if you find someone who's really trying and doing well, or, you know, clearly he's got some quality, but no one's watching him. Be the first follower. Join the Spud Club. Somebody join the Spud Club. Thank you very much. Jawthorn. Hi, little stream. Oh, rude, rude. How very dare you. you just you wait until ArenaNet puts out something of note. And then we'll, uh, and then... And then we'll be rolled. I don't know how I want to treat the next expansion, by the way. I don't know whether I want to play it. I'm not going to play it blind with you guys. I take the Aurora Peachy stance here, which I'm very happy that she's got similar opinions to me on. Which is that uh, we like to experience things the first time that we care about on on our own. And, you know, not, not trying to do this weird balance of entertaining people and also experiencing it for the first time and all that stuff. Uh, but when the expansion comes out and when when the other stuff comes out, I think it'll be interesting to uh, um, Share that with you guys. It'll be fun. It'll be weird All right. Oh, it's the harpy one. We could just kill tons of harpies here There are two things I like in streams one British voice and two no face I get annoyed by watching a real person really why do you get annoyed? I mean, I suppose I should be happy with that because I'm like your perfect guy there then. But what what annoys you about seeing someone's face? I honestly, like, I don't see the difference too much between, um, you know, that potato sitting there in front of the X-Men mansion and if it was actually my face. Especially, it, you know, if I was like a really hot guy or, or if I was a really hot girl, I do think it's a value add to the stream. I do. I think people are naturally drawn to streams and videos and things when whoever's in it is attractive or has at least got their set up and their lighting and their the angle of the camera and stuff thus that they appear attractive people have ticks and i start focusing on it and it starts so is that therefore yours wp show cleavage oh you better believe it lads if if and when uh the anonymity drops on my streams it will be low cut tops all the way. Actually, that that gets you banned, even as a man, doesn't it? Didn't a lot of dudes used to stream shirtless and they introduced rules saying, no, you can't do this anymore. Isn't that a thing? I'll be wearing push-up bras. I'll put my best makeup on. I'll completely overhaul my wardrobe, which currently consists of maybe five shirts and uh, that I regularly wear in rotation. I'll completely overhaul it so you could watch 30 streams a month and in not one of them would I be wearing the same clothes because these things are important. I'll be wearing all my finest jewellery. The face cam will be 66% larger just so that more of me is on display because ultimately guys it's all about me. You don't want to watch me completing hearts. You want to watch me. There's the invisible exhibition. I don't know if that's another city. It's the invisible exposition? Expo uh. Time to take the stream to the next level. Hot potato grill. Oh, man. One of the face cams... Uh, listen, I was offering gems to people who made face cams before. I haven't done it for a little while. I'll offer gems, right? 400 gems, I promise. And there is no time limit on this until someone else claims the bounty. 400 gems to the first person who gives me a potato cam of a bunch of potatoes being boiled in a pan. And there's, you know, it's frothing with the bubbly white water, right? Because they're all being boiled in a saucepan in water. But one of the potatoes that's bobbing in amongst all the other ones has a face on it. And it looks like anguished and it looks like it's about to sink underwater. 400 gems. The first person who makes me specifically that, fa that, that potato cam. I think that would be an awesome, uh, awesome potato cam. I really should set that bounty thing up. Maybe I should work on that after the stream. In the middle of playing Crash. So interestingly, we do have map completion, but we never unfogged an area. Maybe that's why I feel like that's a surprise that we finished this a bit quicker. But so uh, let's move on then, guys. We are going to be on the next char map now. This is the Iron Marches. Again, welcome to come with me. I should drink some of this coffee before I forget it. Sean says I'm on it. Holy shit. 400 gems. Here we go. It's got to be good, Sean. Uh, all you guys need to do, 720p at most, um, 30 FPS, or, well, 60 FPS, because I do stream at 60, and, uh, and have it as a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. That's it. That's what we've got to do. Put it on YouTube, put it on a Google Drive, put it on a Dropbox, put it on Mega Upload, anywhere. I'll grab it from those. 
Only about 20 seconds and then I can loop it. It doesn't need to be that long. The invisible exhibition is made to st simulate what blind people experience life like. Well, see, I heard an interesting fact on a Tom Scott video recently. That was uh, most people, very, 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 very few people are fully blind. Most people are, you know, they have some light sensitivity going on. They have some, like, very vague, hazy impression of the world. I thought that was quite curious. Because I tend to think of it because I'm not blind. I tend to think of it as just this binary thing. But obviously that's wrong, right? Obviously. You can see that in everyday life with different people having different prescriptions. You know, it's interesting because I am... Uh... Oh, I can't remember this. Anyway, I, my eyes are bad in one regard, but my mum's are bad in the complete reverse regard. So, like, I can astonish her by reading and seeing things at a certain distance away that she never could. And she can astonish me by doing it and vice versa. But, and both of our things are very, very minor for what it's worth. But, you know, I don't know why I just told you. That's not an interesting fact. I'm just talking about people you don't know. Frying Chicken BLC, nice to see you, dude. Only anime movie I would suggest besides Studio Ghibli is a movie called The Boy and the Beast. Okay, sell it to me. What, what was so interesting about that? Uh, that Tom Scott uploads, it's about um, it's about the pavements and things that they do in the United Kingdom on on uh, in cities. Like at stop signs in front of traffic lights and stuff. You know, you get like those textured pavings on the floor and things um it's stuff like you know it's 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 the fact that they all have meaning and the colors that they are have meaning and you know you never think about it i love stuff like that. i really really do i love the style of videos that he does i swear if i wasn't if i wasn't in the gaming area of youtube i'd be in an area like that i think that's so cool well sort of i don't know i've got a lot of ideas about that stuff but I lived the first 17 years of my life short-sighted, unable to see anything clearly after 10 meters, and assumed everyone saw like that. I got glasses a year ago, and now the world is magical. Oh, Neon, I had something similar. I, when I was very young, I had to wear glasses. And then, uh, no word of a lie, as I grew older, and I did more, like, tests at the opticians, I was told by my optician that it was, it was sorted now, and I didn't need glasses. Seriously. And so by the time I was like 13, maybe, I wasn't wearing glasses anymore. And then I didn't wear glasses till I was like 22, maybe, right? So all these years, so all, all my high school, if, if you will, years, no glasses. But as a little kid, I'd worn them. And then it was only when I was like an adult and I was learning to drive a while back, uh, my instructor wanted me to read a license plate on a car that was a bit away. And, um, and I couldn't do it. And then that was when I realized, oh shit, I actually do need glasses. And yeah, I had that moment too, where I went, I put them on, and it's amazing, isn't it? Best description I can ever offer to anyone, anyone with 20-20 vision and has never known anything other, other than that. First of all, fuck you. Second of all, it's like, you know the difference between going from a, an SDTV to a HDTV? It's literally like that. That kind of level of haze, as soon as you put the glasses on, it's like going HD in real life, right? And it's fun. It's fun. It's cool. I mean, a lot of people are scared of, like, finding out that their eyes are bad and stuff. But I seriously would encourage you, go get them checked out. Even if you've got only slight misgivings, because it's fun. It's fun to be like, holy shit, look, the whole world. You don't know what you're missing out on. Seriously. It's the trailer. Well, I can't watch the trailer right now, Flying Chicken. Can you PM me that instead of leaving it in chat? Because I'm not going to be able to dig that up. I think I found the video, the little known patterns on British streets. Yeah, that's probably the one. That's probably the one. Yeah, and they've got like a, a blind guy, if you will. But he was talking about how very few people are only nearsighted. Or completely blind. AWP, hey, weird question for you. Do you have any recommendations for how I can reinvigorate my drive to play Guild Wars 2 again? I have a few AEs, about 5,000 achievement points. I've dabbled in pretty much all the gameplay elements, at least a little. And I'm not sure how to feel super into it again. That is the question, isn't it? That's the big thing. It, it, it's hard because different things do it for different people. Um, I mean, first of all, if you're very socially inclined, being incredibly proactive and taking the matter into your own hands about finding a community is a, is a nice first step. Because without a community for a lot of people in MMO is very hollow. I wouldn't be surprised if that might be the same for you. 
I personally don't really fall into that so much. I, I, I don't really live and die by the sword of having a community, I don't think, in MMOs. Not really. The most community I, like, I've had was, was a long, long, long time ago, I would say. And especially my very first experiences in MMOs when I was way younger and when I was playing RuneScape and stuff. Um, and that novelty of just, you know, what an MMO is was still incredibly crazy. Uh, but I don't know. I, I mean, you've you got to find something you want to go for. For me, um, climbing through fractals to 100 and then getting the Omni Potion was, was really cool. And having a group to do that with consistently, that was cool. Uh... If you're not into into legendaries, PvP is a rabbit hole, a desperately dark and scary place that will leave you a couple of months for, fast forward in time, and you'll realize what the, wonder what the fuck happened because you've been playing it so much. World versus world, uh, I guess if you go, if you manage to get a big community there, you spent a lot of time in team speak, you could probably love that. I don't know. It's very hard for me to offer you that advice. Raiding is incredible if you can get a group for that and start doing that consistently. What about uh, why doesn't chat help me out a little bit here? I mean, I, I lament that the game doesn't answer that question for you. Do you know what I mean? That's that 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 that, that always upsets me, really. <coughs> Someone says, "What's he doing running around?" I've, I'm late to the stream. It's a uh, world completion we're getting. We want two gifts of mastery so that we can make. Two more legendaries. Well, three legendaries, really. And then we're going to buy three more. And then we're going to buy four more. And then we're done. And then it's all consolation prizes and stuff. Also mentally scarred because PvP people are terrible. Yeah, I mean, you can turn chat off. But eventually there's going to come a day where you want to be competitive. And you're going to turn it back on. And then you're going to have to learn to face it. But PvP really is the dregs. It, it really is the worst of the Guild Wars 2 community by a long way. By a very long way. So do do go in there with thick skin. And ideally, don't join in with them. Which is what most people end up doing. Myself included. I, I've ended up getting angry and throwing some swears around. Stuff I'd be ashamed to have released online. Look at what Wooden Potato said to me in PvP. I would be genuinely ashamed of some of the stuff I'd... Well, I've, it's not like I've said it much, but... I've had my moments of weakness. <laughs> Lol, PvP is terrible, but it's still a fun mode. Talims, sometimes you astound me. What, what is that comment? What does that mean? Seriously, think about that. Look at what you just said. If it's fun, how is it also terrible? Set yourself smaller goals. I mean, back in the day as well, I really enjoyed getting the uh, the the dry top collection finished and the silver waist collection finished. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed doing all of the Heart of Thorn stuff, getting all of those achievements and finishing all of that stuff. That was cool. I've enjoyed getting collections. I mean, I've enjoyed a huge number of different things, but I've played a huge number of hours. I don't know what would give you the most bang for your buck. Do you know what I mean? I kind of want to do a new player guide for the game that would lead people in a, in a nice, reasonable order. But, I don't know. Anyway, load the cannon. I'm still rubbish at this. I forget. There's an easy way to do this as well, and I just can't remember what it's supposed to be. So they fire at the wall. Then you come over to the wall. You grab chunks of the wall. You throw in the water. Does that water count, or does it have to be the deepest water? Let's see. Oh, that water does count. Okay, cool. Why are the char attempting to destroy the wall? Because they, they don't like the human legacy here. They want to vandalize it. They want to pull this shit down. They don't like it. And the ghosts are eternally defending it. Sorry if that's not apparent through most other areas of Guild Wars 2. But the, I, I, I'm, still, I'm still a bit annoyed. I saw a comment. Someone was like, The day I lost respect for you with law was when you said that the Char would dislike the mantle. It's been ages. It's like, yeah, but the, these things feed their history. And besides, it was actually pointed at in the Lake Doric patch. 
Ah, it's frustrating. But yeah, you can still see stuff like this. There is, you know, the peace treaty was only very recently. But it gives Ascalon character. They don't care. They want industry. They want smog. They want tanks and helicopters and machines of war and destruction. And they want it to be theirs. It might give it character, but it's not char character, is it? Same reason why in the real world we've destroyed so many old, amazing, beautiful things in the ancient world. 100% magic find! Dude, seven months! Thank you so much! A lot of you guys are creeping up there. I wonder, have I got mine yet? Nope, still not. Still haven't been streaming for two years, guys. Still not. Did I get all the shards I needed? Yes, we are. We're, we're, we're well done with that tree pixels. That was, that was all over. That's deep WP. <laughs> what is Mayo Chef? I love your name, dude. Mayo Chef. It's brilliant. There's something about mayonnaise as a food that I find very that I, I think is a, is ripe for comedy. Mayonnaise. I don't know what it is. Just <sighs> I think it's all these experiences of uh, you know you see on TV shows where there's some fat guy that's eating like mayo straight out of the jar, just spooning it out straight into their mouth. It's just funny. You idiot sandwich. What does that mean? Let's go this way. Gift of fortune is the thing that's painful. Everything else about legendary crafting is fairly easy compared to it. Yeah, for regular series, I think. But for hours, um, it's kind of flip-flopped. Because we got the funds to just pull out a ton of Gifts of Fortune if we really wanted to. Especially on this account. Now that we got the, all the Spirit Shards. I mean, with 6,000 Spirit Shards, we could potentially make like... Oh, I don't know, but a lot of Clovers. A, a lot of Clovers. And the rest of it, you can just buy, 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 buy. If there's one anime you should watch... You, you listen, guys, can I just tell you something? Utah, I really appreciate the, uh, the, the, the suggestion there. But listen, I'm not in the market for anime. I don't know. There's something about the internet, and I've experienced this for years now. You can't mention anime without a hundred different, like, recommendations of different anime to watch. People who watch anime seem really desperate to this is history. make people watch more anime. I'm, I'm not in the market for more anime. I'm, I, there's no, I'm, not, I'm not like, oh, I've got a load of free time on my hands. Time to watch a bunch of anime. Uh, no, I, 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 I thank you for the recommendation, but there's absolutely zero chance that I'm going to remember the name of the show. Or actually sit down and watch it. Not in the market. Sorry. If I'd come out and said, oh, I'm a huge anime fan, give me more, then I understand it, but... It's like recommending a book. Yeah, but the thing is, I can mention Harry Potter without people giving me 20 other books to go and read. I got you there, but there's a mayonnaise comic relief character. Oh, I've, I've, I've done a 180. Where's a torrent? Let's go. Let's get it, baby. Sorry, I mean, where can I buy the DVD? Let's go. Mayonnaise side character? I am game. Huh. I watch fuck tons of anime and explicitly try to never recommend it to other people because so many people just vomit recommendations 24-7. Oh, I'm glad that someone else actually has experienced that and it's not just me being a grouch. Tactical Luke? Thanks, man. High five. WP, if you liked Harry Potter, then I've got a book for you. Happy Monday, you got a day off work, you jammy bastards. Did you take did you pull a sicky? Listen, your boss could be on this stream. You know how famous we are. You know how big these streams are. Your boss could be listening right now. He could be bunking off in his office. And he could be getting in some Guild Wars 2 action. And now he's seen your username and you're getting done for, mate. Unless you just took a day off. You liked Harry Potter one? Then you should watch Harry. Read Harry Potter two. I'm a big snob about those books compared to the movies. You know, people are always like, "Oh, the movies are left out so much." Blah blah blah. I'm exactly that loser. I'm exactly that nerd. If you ask me about the Harry Potter movies versus the books, I will give you the. Yeah, the books are so much better. Please. 
That's that's me in a nutshell, one thousand percent. The books are a billion times better than the movies. The movies are dog shit. They're actually, I don't even, I don't know why those movies are big at all, really, because the movies are just bad. They're not good movies. They're not. I think it's the Doctor Who thing where they get some modicum of success because like Americans like to watch idealized versions of Britain or something, even though the content itself is a bit poo. I think that there's something in that. I mean, Doctor Who has its ups and downs, at least. I think Harry Potter, gener the movies, generally speaking, were like 4 out of 10 to 6 out of 10, at best. I mean, the, the child acting is so bad as well. And even when they got a bit adolescent, it still wasn't that good. And the direction was off at the oh, Anyway. But the books are incredible. The books are really, really incredible. Where are the high? Oh no, yeah, we're high horsing. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want a high horse. No, I didn't want to do this. Look, I can only talk about my positive feelings for things. No, I'm not going to put. The movies are good, guys. Go watch the movies. They deserve every penny that they earned. Doctor Who only has ups from Dar Star Crusher. Well, Dar Star Crusher, I would love to attack you for that. And devour you for such a clearly uh, foolish opinion. However, I'm only allowed to be positive now. So, uh, yeah, Doctor Who's amazing as well. You guys should watch Doctor Who. There's never been a bad episode. Most of them are like 9.5 out of 10, if not higher. There is no such thing as a best Doctor. They're all the best. I wanted to say I like the movies more than the books, but it's been 10 years since I read them. I mean, I don't read much, so my opinion on the quality of books is probably very low, I'm sure. <sighs> if you like Doctor Who, boy, do I got an anime for you. I wouldn't be surprised if there is an anime version of Doctor Who essentially out there somewhere. I would not be surprised at all. I'd even be interested in reading about it. Not it, but about it. No, WP, I disagree with this. There's a difference between high horsing and being a straight up liar. Give it to us straight. I'm not lying. I'm not lied. I've simply had a dramatic opinion shift in the past three seconds. Am I looking forward to Game of Thrones next week to see how much worse it got from not following the book storyline? Well, see, I haven't read the books, and I kind of, with those, and I mean, I, I do this with Harry Potter as well, right? Like, I'm, I'm being a bit. I'm exaggerating a bit for the funnies. But, um. Like, I fully appreciate... G Game of Thrones is in a really interesting place now where, obviously, it's diverged from the the source material and it will continue to. Um, and I, I think I think that's actually kind of a cool thing to embrace at the moment. I think uh, they can go forward with that, honestly. Uh, it's a bit like what Walking Dead did, honestly, as well, for all of that show's recent faults and so on. Um, I do... I very much respect that they were basically like, look, let's not just follow the comics to a T... Let's do some weird shit to change it up. Let's introduce characters that weren't in the comics at all. Let's swap characters around, essentially. Like, Andrea and Carol are basically swapped comics to TV show and stuff. Um, big events can change. Uh, sorry, well, you know, the large beats are all there, but the, the specifics are different. And I think Game of Thrones going that route, that, that can be perfectly okay, so... And no matter how it compares to those books... Um, I do, I do really think Game of Thrones is one of the best TV shows that I've ever seen. I really do. Um, even though, I mean, just, the thing is, right, guys, anything that lasts a while will have its ups and downs. Anything. In fact, it doesn't even have to last. I realized this, uh, uh, yesterday. I was listening to the Frozen soundtrack, right? I've watched Frozen a shit ton of times, guys. Like, a lot of times. And, um... I've listened to the soundtrack a lot of times. And it was only yesterday I was listening to one of the, the songs. Um, it's the song where Anna is um, is preparing for the big party, essentially at the start of the movie. And she's excited that she's going to finally meet other people, right? And it's just this song where she's, like, excited that, mo uh, that you know, that the big day is coming. Um, for the first time in forever. This is the song, right? And it was only yesterday that I noticed that they'd kept that song gender neutral. Which is, which is a, a, an interesting fact to me, right? So they, they hadn't said, Oh, I'm waiting for a man to come and sweep me off my feet. 
they uh they deli- and it was really i uh, cuz i listened back to it after i realized it like they they specifically jammed their way around it it's just like another little example of of that movie trying to be progressive in as many different ways and subtle ways as it could and I, i'd never realized that that song had tried to be gender new- she does meet a man in the end but and anyway, I realized, like, there's so many little details. The more you just look at something, eventually you will find that there's something about you like, there's something you could have improved, there's something that you dislike, whatever, right? Like, with anything, really. So, it doesn't even have to be a long time, right? It's just the more time that passes, the more profound those ups and downs will be. And I do think G Game of Thrones dropped off a little bit over the past couple of years. But only a little bit. I still think it's stellar television. You just watched Moana the other day. You thought it was really good. It is a good movie, right? If you're going to compare Moana to Frozen, Frozen is overall a better movie. But Moana hits a higher high than Frozen by a long way. Moana hits a much higher peak. Like, by a long, 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 long way. I'm glad you like it. It's a gorgeous movie as well. I don't have the guide on anymore, so I can't remember how, how to do this quick and easy. Uh, I wonder if the event's going on up there. I don't know. So we got a sword, right? So the sword guy... Sorry guys, we actually have to pay attention to this game. We're supposed to be streaming and playing and stuff. We actually have to pay attention right now. Well, this guy... No one's got anything unblockable. That was crazy. I would love to have seen the blocks on his client there. Do you guys ever wonder that when you kill an enemy and you wonder what it would look like if it was his client? What is this? Is this a shield? No, this is a hammer. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's just spam shit around. Oh, we got that one, right? That's good. The hammers go there. To underfist. The object of the day is map complete, a bunch of Ascon stuff. Just chilling easy. We call it the chill stream. It's unadvertised. We're just going to chill out, relax, shoot some people outside of the school. Possibly meet a couple of guys who are up to no good. Who knows? They might be talking trouble in our neighborhood. I'm going to get in one little fight. Mum might get scared. And we'll go with our auntie and uncle. To another region of the world. Possibly not Ascalon. Because we'll be done with that eventually. But the ghost still used a sword. Ah, oh, so inconsistent. Arena net. This is what the Corteria Overhaul is for. <laughs> There's no need to investigate this one. In MMO news today, Guild Wars 2's local events now require guides to complete. No, they just require me to engage my brain and I'm unwilling to do it. <laughs> Look, it's either I focus on this and stop talking to you guys. Listen, I I end up ranting and rambling so much I forget to even drink the coffee I made just before the stream, regularly. All right, this is how bad my uh, multitask ability is. Actually, I gotta be honest, I think I got a good multitask ability. I, I reckon I can multitask quite a lot of different shit. It's just very, it's a lot harder streaming than it looks to to, to strike that balance. Don't criticize till you guys have tried it. Speaking of coffee, ugh, it's gone. It's beyond the point. It's all right. I only missed about a third of the mug this time, so. Got a shadow blade. What was he doing in there? There's a reason we call arena net consistently inconsistent. All right, so let me ask you this, Twitch chat. Here we go. Fingers on buzzers. You guys ready? What is the most irritating inconsistency in Guild Wars 2 to you? Of today, 2K17. Let's hear it. The most irritating inconsistency. There's no there's no need to rush into thinking of it. And don't just look at what other people say in chat. Close your eyes. Have a think. And uh, and get back to me on it. See, look. That's an interesting question, isn't it? That'll stimulate your brains. Horses. That's not an incon... Well, vaguely. Come on, that's a, celebra that's a celebration of inconsistency, though. I like the horses thing. Damage? Oh god. What do you mean damage? What does that even mean? Bags? I'll tell you what the most uh, inconsistent one is. Sam bot, for me, obviously, I don't have a monopoly on this, on the answer to this, but uh, Sam boss 10 got close to it. He said so many containers and he said bags. The most irritating inconsistent to me is when you get an heirloom seed pouch. And another heirloom seed pouch, and they won't stack. And what really winds me up about those is obviously they're different items with different item IDs. 
If the devs just renamed one of them and gave it a slightly different icon, like Rotten uh, Rotten Seed Pouch or something, it would be it would be flavorful and interesting. But no, that winds me right up. And when that happens with the bandit bags and stuff like that, that's probably my most irritating in inconsistency. But there's quite a lot in the skill system as well and tool tips and things that I think even today and they've they've made huge leaps to fix that stuff. But I think even today they should improve. And Corteri is full of stuff. Like, just yesterday, remember, we were fighting that that mob. And it, um... Uh, and it was immune to all CCs, but it didn't have stability. That kind of stuff annoys me as well. The level 20 boosters. Eh, that's, only, that's a cop-out answer, I think. Just because it appeared on Reddit recently. But, uh, that, that's never really annoyed me very much. Anyway. Finally, this heart is done. We get to move on. WP, have you tried to cook any Guild Wars 2 food like seaweed salad, delicious bowl of refugees be beet soup? No, but we talked about that on a recent stream. Uh, as you guys know, we're getting all these legendaries. We're going to give them all away in a competition. The purpose of the com competition is to get new people on YouTube. And what you guys are going to do to win the legendaries is you're going to make a YouTube video or a series of videos or whatever tickles your fancy that essentially sells Guild Wars 2 and advertises Guild Wars 2 through word of mouth to people and gets more people into the game, encourages people to come back, try it out, try it for the first time, whatever, right? Uh, help break off this dust, this funk that's over the game that, oh, it's old, so it mustn't be good. And we're going to co coincide that with the next expansion, so there's all this big exciting stuff going on. That's the idea, right? We were talking about the cooking thing on a recent stream, and I said, actually, what I think would be a really killer, awesome submission for that would be if someone started off a YouTube channel and they started doing a cooking show where they cooked Guild Wars 2 foods like really, really, really well and did it as professionally as they possibly could. I think that'd be awesome. So we did talk about that recently. Do you like Guild Wars 2? Then I've got an anime for you. The most anime Guild Wars ever got was those chibi doll things, right? Is that, is that anime? That's just Japanesey, right? But that, that I think that was the most anime it got. Aside from the dozens of the crazy amount of fan art that the game tends to get from people who like to do in an anime style prepare to suffer do you guys want to hear one of my like ugliest opinions when it comes to anime right this is this is a thing where you can judge me and it's it's a deep seated thing and it's a thing I try to get away from because I know it, it's not true, or I, I think it's not true, and I don't. I, I you know, I, th I think it's not a, a right way to think about an entire thing of media, right? But it's it's in there and it's stuck in there because it was like something that became a thing during my formative years when I was uh, ve quite young, when we were um, maybe the start of secondary school or something. I had a friend who uh, used to be really into art. And um, he'd do a lot of drawing and stuff. And uh, actually, I actually had a couple of friends like this, right? They do a lot of drawing and stuff. And um, n none of us really had any talent, as far as I can discern. We, you know, we were all, we were all so young. When when would we have fostered or honed that talent, right? But the funny thing was, I realised that all the people who drew anything or did anything that looked anywhere remotely reasonably good, they were all drawing in an anime art style. It was always an anime art style, and it kind of put into my my young my young head from an early age that it must be easy to draw anime. It must be easier to draw characters, and it must be you know that that's like a cop out art style. It's like there's there's nothing actually good about what you're doing. I mean, there's some good about what you're doing, but it's not actually that good. Anime is like the easy thing to do. And that is like stuck in my, and I don't really believe it, but I always, uh, on occasion, I'll catch that slipping and I'll be like, no, that's not true. And I, I don't know whether it's true. I don't know whether, whether anime deserves judgment as being like some kind of tacky cop out thing just because it's easier to draw or whatever. But I did notice that anyone who, who was trying to be an artist or whatever, they were sort of all sort of res resorting to that art style. Because they could get reasonably functional images out of it with pen and paper. I do very distinctly recall that. Very well. We are potatoes. Uh. 
Jesus Christ, if I could be called a weeaboo, I don't know, I don't know what it takes to, uh... To qualify these days. I think pretty much anyone would be one then at that point, right? You, 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 you know that this, this, this thing exists? You know that anime exists? Weeaboo! Which bosses would you like to see in a sewer raid? Ah, oh, amazing question. An ooze boss, of course. Big old ooze boss. Now, here's the thing. My dream scenario for Guild Wars 2 would be to have a wizard's tower raid. Uh, where the overarching theme and story and stuff is about is Garen and Verata and stuff and soul manipulation. And what they did with that in terms of necromancy and creating elementals and infusing souls and stealing souls from people from the town like vampires and stuff. And um, one big thing that I want them to be doing their ultimate research at the top of the wizard's tower is I would want them to be recreating a foundry of failed creations. Recreating a facility that would create titans. Because we know titans are just tortured, anguished souls for long enough. And through some mechanism, they become a titan. So I like the idea of the final big boss of the wizard's tower be a titan. And then that somehow maybe ties into the white mantle affiliations with the tower. And why we saw the white mantle were interested in it back in the day. And so on and so on and so on. Maybe the Masat. Maybe we get, you know, Gareth's quest. A white mantle was trying to infiltrate the tower. Maybe we find out in this raid that... Gowrath had been manipulated to do this by his confessor because the Massart had sort of subtly implied, hey, we don't want any fucking titans around because the Massart know that the titans are the downfall. So the, the they were ultimately pulling Gowrath's strings to try and bring down the, 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 the wizard's tower before it could start generating titans and undermine the Massart. Um, and they succeed. Uh, and, and, then, uh, and then the heroes come along. And it kind of doesn't work. I, I like I like all that anyway. So I want a Titan final boss. And I think Titans would be amazing raid bosses. Because they've got this thing where they change appearance. And they split into other forms as they die. And I think you could do some really interesting mechanics there. So it would be a final boss that has like that splitting mechanic, right? So first of all, I'd want that in Guild Wars 2. But I would also want a sewer raid. And I would want that sewer raid to have an ooze boss. Now the ooze boss also, the go-to is to say, oh shit, well... He should split, right? He should... But I wouldn't want too much overlap between a Titan and an Ooze. But what the devs could do is the Sewer Raid Ooze could have tech that then the Titan boss in the Wizard's Tower also, like, uses. But, like, Grandfather's in. But they they manipulate that tech in slightly different ways or something. Uh, but, yeah, you've got to have an Ooze boss in a Sewer Raid. I'd want a Drake boss as well. Like, a giant brood mother Drake. <laughs> Um, possibly as some kind of, like, entrance boss akin to Slothazor. Oh, no, now it's this one. This one's a nightmare as well, isn't it? If the event isn't up. Uh, so, yeah, I like that idea. What else would I have in there? Maybe, maybe a tar boss, right? Like, tar? The thing is, it's a raid, right? So, they quite often make entirely new creatures in raids. So, uh, and, and let's see, you know, let's have it be four encounters. One's a drake. One's an ooze, one's a tar, and the last one's like some kind of like, um, yeah, something to do with the story of why we're down there and it's a, it's a unique new thing like keep construct or whatever. There you go. Let's do that. Ah, oh, I'll tell you what would be really cool. Mystery boss. It's not the final boss in the sewer raid, but there's a mystery boss. Comes bubbling out of the skanky, horrible waters that connect to Lake Regent and beyond, right? Salty frothing briny deep and it comes up in this big chamber a bit like the garam scythe waterway waterworks and the sluices in final fantasy 12 no one watching this will know what i'm talking about there but still it comes up and it's a mystery boss we don't know where it is we don't know where it came from it's all these writhing horrible hydra like tentacles with vicious demonic draconic looking heads and we kill it and we move on and we're like what was that where did that come from Little do we know, three years later, Living World Season 7, boom! Oh my god, it was a deep sea dragon minion! Arr! There you go. The setups. Wooden potato sewer raid. Also, by the way, in the sewer raid, I'd want one of the rooms to be pitch black, and I'd want us to have to carry light sources around. A bit like the end of Season 3, uh, Season 2 had us do, when we were going to that big cave, and a bit like the Ravenheart Gloom had us do in GW1. Look at these. These are all quality ideas. This is all gold dust. Alright, people. You cannot beat this. So mysterious like Samrog. Yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. 
or a blue, pink, red, yellow, green, and black ooze after defeating every single one in the end boss, the big transformer like Power Rangers, into a chromatic ooze. I should have a hidden achievement for killing it with my mystic chromatic ooze on here, which we uh, earned in a recent stream. No rats. Oh, that's a good point. That's a really good point. That's a great idea as well because rats in Guild Wars, we've never seen a, a scaled up big rat, have we? We've never seen a, a rat actually be a fight. None of the critters they've ever done that with. They've never scaled up a raccoon to massive size and shown us these animations and stuff. Maybe it's because they haven't hooked them to anything. Maybe it would only work if it's like a structure. I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, like a rat. No, or maybe because oh, look, in Bastion of the Penitent, they did that new rat tech as well with the fear and stuff, didn't they? So rats would be really cool. Maybe they should just be an ambience thing. Maybe there should just be tons of rats all over the fucking place. Maybe they, maybe rats could be a part of a phase in one of the bosses. Like the boss goes invulnerable and the room floods with rats. And you've got, and the, you know, the rats function mechanically like pocket raptors do in Heart of Thorns. But there's tons of them and it's scaled for 10 man. So what you have is you have a raid encounter that encourages a lot of AoE stuff in your party composition. So that you can clear these guys down. Maybe do it to such an extent that classic comps right now would struggle more than a comp that runs, you know, a ton of, like, AoEs and things. And you just flood the entire room with just, like, a tidal wave of rats comes in or something. I don't know, would that stress the service too much? How many how many uh, things that can they put in there like that? I think that would be really cool. Pocket rattles. Ah. <laughs> Oh, don't say that. Don't give them any ideas. Don't give them any ideas for shitty, horrendous puns like that. No. Not pocket ratters, just vicious rats. Rat of doom. Bloodthirsty rat. There you go. That's what they need to be. We need to be serious, guys. We need to be gritty. We need to be cutting edge. It's got to be dark. All right? It's got to be edgy. Eye devouring rat. Okay. No puns. No. I'm not playing this MMO for puns. I want a raid wing in the mist involving m the moments just before the faux fire. What? You mean like the fractal that's in the mists? Oh, actually, that's not the moments before the faux fire. Sorry. Oh, wait. Is it? No. I can't remember. Wait, when does that say? Is that just before the faux fire? How about you have to maintain a certain level of damage on the boss because the boss emits light when it takes damage. Don't do enough damage. Room darkened and is swarmed with enough rats to wipe the party. Well, I think that the darkness mechanic has to be in a, a between encounters mechanic because it's too easily trolled with gamma correction and post-processing facilities and stuff like that. So I think it would just be sort of a, a, a between. It would be like an ambience. like It'd be like the spirit wall encounter from Wing 1. Do you get what I mean? But I do think it would work really well. I want a really pitch black dark sewer. I also think, by the way, the sewer could be a multi-wing raid. And wing one is the sewers. You know, if people watch the Zurich, I imagine it a lot like the sewers beneath the city at the end of that. You know, before you go to the death realm. But, like, wing one would be, like, the sewer area. And wing two would actually be going down into the tombs we see in Ghosts of Ascalon. And maybe there could be a third wing as well. Three wings. This would be like a Corteria raid. That juicy Corteria Mastery section. Flesh that out a little bit more. Uh, we just had a donation. I can't believe it. Wow. Rahili, will these rats be spreading the Black Death plague incoming? That's interesting. We could do, they could do like a um, we. <laughs> I actually was speaking there as if I'm in some kind of meeting. Like a developer roundtable as they concept out the next thing. Um, they could do a thing like. Uh, Come on, we just need one more thing. Um, like, it's very Condi heavy. Like, Pocket Raptors are power based. What if they were like Condi? But I don't know. I don't know whether that's worth it. What's annoying is we got these people stealing our kills. Here we go. Kill stealing in my Guild Wars 2. Outrageous. Hearts. What a regression. What a terrible thing to plaster over the top of what was otherwise a masterful idea. Alright, let's keep going. Skill challenge now. 
Have they or will they go underneath Divinity's Reach? Yeah, the sewers. Yeah, that's the idea. It's a beneath Divinity's Reach thing, entrance and Lake Doric, presumably. I mean, here's the thing, though. As we move out of Heart of Thorns and Season 3, they probably couldn't do that anymore. Like, they did it for Bloodstone Fen and the Bastion of the Penitent, and that's cool. But unless the sewer raid was, like, before the expansion, I don't think we could have the entrance to it from Lake Doric anymore. So... In all likelihood, this would never happen in the way that I would have a wank over. It would be a slightly... Maybe the Great Collapse would be a better, more interesting entrance. By the way, the reason I said a Drake boss was because of the hit, the classic hints back in Divinity's Reach talking about Drakes being in the sewers. If you buy the game, make sure you use WP's affiliate link to support him. Oh, who's buying the game? Is someone? First of all, thank you to whoever plugged that there for me. Thank you. If you guys shit it, then I, I don't look, you know, like a soulless corporate bastard. But yeah, I have a link below the stream. If anybody wants to buy the expansion after it's announced or um, uh, an alternate account for the other region or even a free-to-play account, by the way, if you use the links below, even a free-to-play account, if you use the links below, it helps me out. And I would sincerely prefer you guys use that when you made your purchases. It's going to be very exciting and thrilling on, on announcement day. And, oh, pre-purchase is available. It's going to be amazing. You're going to be buzzing. You're gonna, your hands are going to be shaking. You're going to be going, just shut up and take my money. And you're going to be clicking immediately. But just hold off for a second for the content creators to put their things out. And that would be that would do us all a massive solid. Under capitalism, we are all the April Fool. Ooh. Ooh, edgy. I already bought the account. Is it too late to refer you? Yes, if you bought it without any sign that I did any... Contributed at all to your enthusiasm for the game, I'm not entitled to anything. So, yes, it's too late. If you retroactively find me after you start playing, I can't be accredited to, like, advertising the game or whatever or deserving of anything. It's no worry, Fedahar. You, you're like, 95% of people will be exactly like you. A huge number of people exactly like that. Most people will forget. I, I will not be the thing on most people's mind when the announcement comes out, and that's fine, right? I'm under no illusion. There's no reason for you to apologize. Why not? Access to HOT should be included in the next expansion. Oh, yeah, actually, Reg, you're right. If they, if the next expansion gives all Living World, prior Living World releases, unlocks them all, which I sincerely think they should. If not in the bait, if they do multiple editions, maybe that's what the deluxe edition or whatever should be, or the equivalent. I don't know. That that if it does that, then yeah, maybe they could do that. That would be cool. I'll tell you what. One of the things I'm most excited about is a physical collector's edition. Oh, wouldn't that be cool, guys? Wouldn't that be cool? What if they did a base edition, a deluxe edition, the ultimate one? Which is essentially just the cheap gems, which was so lame. But what if they did that again? But then they had like a limited run of just like a thousand physical boxed collectors. Well, what if they did that? I'll be... I, I'm not going to lie. I think I'm going to be really disappointed if they don't do a physical collector's edition. It's just so cool. Come on. Come on. We can give you credit for our cow purchases. Oh yeah, it's going to be great. You guys are going to have a fit when it's revealed that the next expansion is called the Cogs of War. You're going to have a fit. And you're going to have another fit when you realise that it's called Cogs of War. And like the, the poster art, or you know, like the the, 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 the game art, the front cut, you know, that if you were to buy a physical CD, what would appear on the front? It's a cow, literally. It's not even a chart, it's just a cow. You, you're going to, you're going to be, it's going to be unbelievable. You just got your fourth birthday gift in game. Congratulations. That's really badass. Oh, chat's starting to move a bit fast. I was recently going through Wing 3 and I noticed quite a few references to Saw and some of it kind of tied into references. Do you ever notice? Did you ever notice these and infer that it was leading to Wing 4? Yeah, well, of course. So the the Saw references in Wing 3 were amazing. They were some of my favorite moments. They were really, really cool. Specifically the one where if you're in a sewer and you go to the Saw statue and she says, Saw D'Alessio. So you're where all this began. But I mean, I mean, it, it's kind of a funny thing in that I wish I could say, oh yeah, they were explicit enough to anticipate Wing 4, but they weren't really. There were a lot of different things they set up there. They also set up the bandits that had been trading from across the lake. They also There were several other statues and confessors and things there as well. 
um, any number of different things could have been picked up on, just as any number of different things could be picked. Like the next wing, right? For example, wing five, or you know, the next raid that comes out, could feature the forgotten, right? And if it does, people might be like, oh, look, I literally, what you just said to me, it could be happening a year from now. And someone will say, WP, did you notice that there was a reference to a serpentine creature in, in Wing 4? And did you did you know that it was going to... Of course we didn't know. It was just one little hint, and then they, it ended up in... But it could be any number of things. It's, it's not specific enough to go any further. But it's nice. It's nice to have a bit of a through line there. And I, and I, I love the way that they're doing it. It's just you can't really claim that it's any of it's explicit enough. See, I mean, this is, even these maps are a bit shittily balanced, really, because this area here is super easy to do the heart over a massive area. This must have been a plan for a world boss site. It must have been. This, I bet that this was meant to be, like, the uh, God's Lost Swamp in that heart progress would go up really slowly, but there would be a world boss there. And then they never added the world boss, so then they didn't do this. I bet that this, anything you like, that this is what this was. After Living World trailers put out, how long does it usually take for the episode to come out? Uh, one week. They do it really quickly. You'll get like a trailer on Tuesday and next Tuesday it'll be out. Seriously. That's what they've done the past... The entire season, isn't it? They've been very good at it. Oh, we're in the boundary here between two hearts, so... Have to be careful on that one. WP, did you notice the Living World Season 2 and a raw path? Whatever confirmed the wing 20 forgotten raid. Oh. oh, no, I didn't. I guess I'm bad at law. I guess I should hang my hat up. Yeah. Having Living World Season 1 available would make the retail much more clear to new players. I mean, yeah, it is really bad that we don't have Season 1. You guys know my opinion on that. Set up a team that first looks at Quarteria, improves all of that, sorts that stuff out. Bi-monthly releases. First they sort out Char stuff, then Asura, then Norn, then blah, blah, blah. Then you work on the Zaitan story, and so on and so on and so on. Once they're done, that exact group goes on to re-implement Season 1. And in this way, you have everybody replay through, get a baseline, re-understand all the story as they go, get Season 1. And then once Season 1's finished, you're all up to par, and it's all a beautiful, incredible game. And, and player retention should go through the roof if they did that. Hello, Hup Hup Chup Nup. That's an awesome name. Welcome, welcome. Hype, 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 says Pickle. Showcasing some of our glorious potato emotes. You think a team should re implement season one first? At least Corteria has a story. Mm, yeah, I mean, I'm a bit idealistic with it, though. What I would like is, like, with the remake of the core story, they could uh, strengthen the through line between the core story and season one. And having that, that insight would help them when they finally got to season one. I've explained that incredibly poorly, but hopefully you know what I mean. So I think the value of that is 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 incredible. But yeah, you're right. For the immediate now, it's it's a bit of a... Oh, just go watch Dreamy Abaddon Season 1 movie, guys. Go, go watch that. Oh. That's basically what I have to tell people. Yeah, a lot of Season 1 has to be re redesigned. At no point, and I, really, I sincerely hope I've never given anyone this impression, at no point have I hoped to make it seem like Season 1 is easy. And if you think Season 1 re-implementation would be easy, you're a fool. If you think, oh, they already made it. No, 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 no. There's no, like... First of all, season one has no, like, um, glue to hold it together. It's like big events and things happen, but there's no, like... I mean, we've used the word so many times just recently, but it works here as well. Through line. There's no, like, this leads you... You know, padding and cartilage between the meat of all and the bones of the actual content. Because when it originally came out, it was just, oh, an update's out, let's play it. But that doesn't work if you were getting... It would just be so weird and disjointed and disconnected if they just dumped it all back in. Then there's also the fact that a huge number of Season 1 stuff was absolutely reliant on massive zergs of players charging around that just wouldn't be there anymore. And so all of that stuff would have to be completely differently redesigned. Stuff like the Tower of Nightmares just almost wouldn't work. Let alone some of the Scarlet Invasion stuff, the Marionette. 
a lot of it would have to be very, very, very differently uh, implemented. It wouldn't be hard, I don't think. It would just be, you know, it's it's starting over, really. It's start aside from like having assets like sound effects and art and and uh, and you know models and animations and things to work with. Aside from having assets and rewards as well to an extent, there's basically nothing else that um they've got to go by. That's not to mention as well. Think about like the, the issues they had with SAB and how SAB had to be remade because of their changes to cheat detection and fly hacking and stuff there might be stuff like that with season one as well so uh, and i mean uh, and then there's embellishments wouldn't you guys like to see embellishments wouldn't you like to see they take the 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 game of today and build it on that don't just re-implement as 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 half-heartedly as you can i mean look at like anti-toxin spray anti-toxin spray was a heal that we would get that would help with specific uh tower of nightmares stuff and toxic alliance stuff and that was interesting right uh, they wouldn't bring anti-toxin spray back as a heal, so what would they do? Well, it kind of leads you into realizing maybe they could do masteries. Maybe they could be like season one masteries, right? Maybe that's something that could flesh out Corteria. Why don't they look at some of the more recent design? Add new rewards that like unlock things in our home instance like they do very frequently now. Uh, new gem store stuff associated with it. You know, you do... This shouldn't be an obligation that you just do the minimal job on. You can make this a huge benefit to the game by looking at what Guild Wars 2 is of today and and applying the lessons you've learned. You can embellish on that old formula, not just re-implement it. So, you know, all of this stuff is now like... You know, it's more than just, I'll oh, have one guy rewrite the code in. Just type, put a 1 there instead of a 0 to re-enable the events. It's like, come on. Not that I see that too much anymore, but it used to be a very popular thing to say. Quite, quite ridiculous. We had another donation. Thank you so much. We have earned £9 today. That's pretty cool. Thank you very much to Noisy, who says, Do you think that ArenaNet will ever create something like a priority choice for area of effect combo fields? A lot of damage is lost when you leap, whirl, or blast in fields you didn't want to. It's especially annoying in raids when you're throwing useless healing bolts out. Um... <laughs> I think that this would be very good and it would definitely help things in the near term and it, I mean it would be really good it would be a good change I would not be upset about this however at fundamentally I still view it as a band-aid though um, and I think that that would be a little bit regrettable uh, I also think by the way not that I necessarily agree with it but I think why ArenaNet might not have done this if it's not a technical thing or why they haven't talked about it, or they, they don't even seem to be contemplating it right now. I think one reason why they might have ummed and ahed about it is you have to look at the roots of what the combo system was initially implemented as. It's a bit like, you know, the legendary armor trench coat thing, where they said, oh, we have to preserve the silhouettes. And it's like, okay, that might have worked in 2012, but this is a game now with outfits and tons of medium armors that don't have that silhouette. It, it, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you're clearly out of touch at this point, mate. You don't, you, you, you know, that, that philosophy isn't re applicable anymore, right? It's similar with, with combo fields. Combo fields, initially, they were put in the game, not just for you to use yourself. That was never the spirit of them. Combo fields were different players comboing together. It was a, a an elementalist putting down a fire field so that a ranger can shoot through it, Right? It was different, and that's why you saw stuff like the Ellie Staff wasn't supposed to have a um, a blast and a field on the same achievement, right? And it, but and, and obviously that's totally not what Guild Wars 2 is anymore. People love comboing in their own fields; they do it all the time. But the idea of comboing in your own fields, while it was a part of the game, ultimately in 2012, that was not the roots of the system. And even where it was, it was like a, it, was, it was seen as a big perk. It was like a special thing. Like Guardian Greatsword was one of those places where it's like, yeah, you can combo with yourself, and this is like. Something notable about the kit. Comboing with yourself, if it, if it was in the game, it was supposed to be notable, right? Um, the spirit of that was always cross-profession play. It was about teamwork and coordination. And what I think, just like with the Legendary Armor thing, what I think the devs might be a bit reticent about with it, is to do the, the priority system thing, is to completely stray from those initial designs... And say, yeah, 
But, I mean, but it would be to face facts and the reality of what the game is right now. And I think it would be a good change. But I think that that might be going on as well. That What I just mentioned there doesn't often enough get into these conversations. People spout the idea out constantly and then parrot it everywhere after they see it on Reddit so frequently. But that I very rarely see come up. But I think that might be a part of it because it's not in the spirit of it being multiple classes working together, right? If anything, it's like the reverse of that, right? And th sorry, that's the point I should really hone in on. It's not just accepting that the game is different now, but it's actually encouraging the reverse. It's saying not only is this not about cross-profession play, it's actually about actively excluding other players' fields now, right? That's the point. It's, it's like a complete 180. And so I think that that might be some part of their hesitation, if there is some, or, or something like that. But it, it, it's an element to the discussion. But yeah, I, I think it would be nice. And um, I also, another little thing I'd like to say as well. Um, it's kind of that the top 1% experiences something, and all of a sudden the majority thinks that they're experiencing it as well. There are very, 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 very few necromancers in very, 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 very few teams that would sincerely get a massive DPS boost from the priority field on the chill fields. Most compositions are not well built, well built enough for that. Most necros are too bad at their rotations for that. Most most of the time, it's, it's it's kind of irrelevant, right? It is a big damage boost when everything's going perfectly. But again, it's it's a fact for the top 5% that everybody else seems to think that they're a part of. So I think that the necessity for this change to go through is very high for the best of the players. But for the vast majority of other players, it's actually not as high as people act like it is. But we all like to think we're the best, don't we? So... WP's live, but it's not even showing I'm live. Oh, is it really? Wow, so this is uh, definitely a quiet stream there then. Wait, did he crash? I didn't crash. I'm here. You guys can see me, right? Hello? Twitch? Grimjack says an option for it would be needed. Uh, that's always an easy answer, but you've got to be careful of like option bloat. Ac Antitoxin spray is a special action key. Uh, Reg says earlier, yeah, exactly, right? Like an, another new thing they can learn from. Yeah, there you go. Our MS Storm Stein just did it all together. Add antitoxin spray as a mastery that gives you a special action skill inside the Tower of Nightmare or when fighting Toxic Alliance. Yeah, there you go. That works well. I think that works really well. Yeah, people do see me. We are fine. We are fine. So anyway, that's kind of my, my feelings. I, I'd like the change. I wouldn't rebel against the change. I think it would be good for the game. I don't mind people asking for it. I think it's necessity is a little overblown. I think a lot of people forget why the devs might um and ah uh, and what the roots of the, the problem in air quotes might be. Holy shit! What the fuck? Wow, that's crazy. That's never happened. Whoa! Oh my god, and my overlay doesn't even tell me. That's really bad. FPS Monkey just subscribed for two months in a row. FPS Monkey... So, for people that don't know, Twitch recently did a thing. Obviously, Twitch gets a big cut of all subs, right? So, they want more ways for people to give streamers money so that Twitch gets more money. Fair enough, right? Capitalism, yeah. Right? Uh, so, Twitch recently did a thing where it used to be you'd give a fiver... And you'd become a sub. Well, now there's a thing where you can give a tenner and you'd be worth two subs, you yourself. And also there's a thing where you can give 25 quid or $25 uh, and you're worth five subs all at once. No one has ever done that. FPS Monkey just did that. He's a T3 sub. He just did. A... Dude, you should have put that on Patreon. You'd probably, well... I've not been very good with the early uploads anyway lately, so maybe not. Thank you, dude. Wow. I can't, I don't know what to say. Thank you very, very much. That's lovely. That's really, really cool of you. Yeah, yeah. Twicky says I didn't even know that possible. Yeah, it only became a thing about a month ago or so, I think. And I've not set anything up. I, I don't think he really gets any perks or anything great from that, but uh, you get the accolade. You are the one and only, dude. I think we've got like two T2 subs, uh, almost 300 T1 subs, and now you. That's crazy. Thank you very much. That's really, really cool. I might. I, I don't actually know the numbers. I haven't looked for a while. <laughs> WP cry on stream. <laughs> I can't believe it's such an amazing donation. I don't deserve you guys. <laughs> Thank 
loved you so much. I, I don't know what to say. My life is so great. Thank you very much. I hope you're enjoying the map completion. <laughs> Just give me a second. I need to stop. There you go. That would be a lot better if I had a face cam. So, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, you just get the voice. Hopefully that, uh, that fulfills my performing monkey quota. This is how we get big on the internet, my friends. Uh, let's go this way. Vipers run. <laughs> Great acting. <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't know what kind of thing could make me cry on stream. I nearly cried. Well, I don't know whether I nearly cried. I nearly... I, 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 I was pretty emotional when I was talking about what happened to Wax a while ago. But I, I honestly don't know what... I, I don't know any, any other circumstance that could possibly get me feeling genuinely emotional on a stream. Because it's happened once and for a period of about five minutes. 10 out of 10, best cry EU. They took the flame lead. Not that it matters much, but T3 subs actually count for six. A little added bonus. Oh! Oh, so Twitch like throws in a little freebie for that, do they? So, oh, I see. So that's what... The, so the reason for that is because if... Listen, guys, if you are currently sub to Wooden Potatoes, please update your sub to a T3 sub because then you're worth more than the sum of your parts. All right? Everyone needs to go up. Maybe I should disable T1 subs. And the Oscar for best online emotional outburst goes to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what, what you guys think is funny about this. Everyone always does that online. They're all pulling your leg. They're all joking. I, I seriously... Well, not joking. They're taking you for a fool. Is this wrong of me? Uh, I, I, this isn't judgmental. This is not judgmental. Okay. I'm not breaking my rule here today. I'm not. We're being nice and we're being perfectly happy. And I'm not acting better than anyone. Is it wrong for me? To almost certainly be sure, to almost 100% sure, that every time someone cries on the internet, it's insincere. I really do feel that way. I really, really, really do feel that way. I just view it as all view grabbing sob stories. All of it. An embellishment. At least, okay, let, let me put it another way. There might be some kernel of sadness or something. But I think that generally it's 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 embellished. I think nearly every single time. I honestly, I think that the ch the times that it's not are really rare. Is that wrong of me? Am I just too disconnected for people who are a bit more, you know, <laughs> emotionally healthy? <laughs> That's because you're British. Do you think? Do you think it's a UK thing? I really do believe that though. I really do. I hate seeing it. I've unsubscribed over the years to so many YouTubers because they've eventually realized that they can tell sob stories. Oh, I have a disability, guys. Oh, I wasn't going to tell you about it, but here's my disability. Or, um, or, oh, I've got money problems, or oh, I've got this, or I've got this. You know, any kind of sob story and just embellish nonsense. And they'll realize that they just get all this applause and praise and love. And then they just start faking it and they do it over and over again. And it keeps, it's just, I've, I've unsubscribed and so many people do that. And it makes me so mad because they just keep growing bigger and bigger. It works. It fucking works. Stop being taken for mugs, please. Audiences of the world, see through it. I know that a lot of you on YouTube are like 14 or 15, but you're old enough to see through it. You are being treated as a commodity. It's so annoying. Oh my god, FPS Monkey also just joined Patreon. Dude, did you just win the lottery or something? Thank you very much. I, I feel like I just won the lottery. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful. Thank you for Patreon. Uh, no, seriously, dude. Thank you very much. That's really cool. What about people with very little subs or no subs at all? Well, then I think, they're I think it's the same. I think they're just grasping at straws. You're wrong because clearly everything on the internet is true. I don't know, even if it, here's, here's the thing, maybe, maybe, maybe my, maybe what I'm saying here is a little bit wrong. Here's the thing that really gets to me though, is that even if it is sincere, 
there's like some kind of on some sleazy you know an emotion is is like an uncontrollable thing right it's like it's 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 a spur on the moment thing it's a private thing to me it's uh you know it, it it's not something to capitalize on but even if they are sincere tears right even if it is you know someone's in, the thought that someone has been like, hold on a minute, I'm feeling quite sad right now. I'll tell you what would be a good idea. I'll go put a camera on my face. I'll hold the tears back for a second and I'll let it all go deliberately with a camera on my face because I can earn a quick buck out of this one. It's that. It's, you know, it's that. Even if the tears are real, it's the preparation. Like, YouTube gives this weird, like, and Twitch and so on. They give these, like... These, these false impressions that everything's very carefree and easy and people are just one click away from being online. But especially people with face cams and stuff, you know, they, 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 they go put their makeup on or they go get, you know, they go put some nicer clothes on. They realize they got fucking Donna Kebab stains on their shirt, so they got to go get changed. They got, you know, there are processes. There's things that you do before you go online. And these people essentially just hold all of it off to wait before they can get on the camera. So that then they can let it go. And it's just like, it's just, ugh. I mean, how can you respect anyone that does that on any level? The most I can understand is, uh, like, someone who, and this goes for, like, traditional media as well. News, TV, stuff. Like a presenter that goes to talk about something and they don't realise it's going to be as hard as it is. You know, like, um, like I spoke at a, a funeral uh, a year or so ago, right? And uh, once I was up there and I was giving my speech and I was talking to everyone in the room and so forth, uh, I, I essentially hosted the funeral ceremony, right? While I was doing that, I realized, like, this is actually really hard. And, and you get emotional and it catches up with you and you do get very upset and you get a frog in your face that you might not have realized you have. That I can understand, but it's very easy to see when that's actually happened. If you guys want to hear, I, I can't remember... what. If you guys want to... Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to bum you out. I'm not going to show you a video. But still. So, I don't know. All right, look. We're done with that topic. Someone asked me something about Guild Wars. There was a good video analyzing this, wasn't there? Really? Can you emotionally describe your love for mayo straight out of the jar? Oh, I, I love... It's smooth. And it's slightly wobbly. I love it when it's just come out of the fridge, you know? And you might be a little bit hot. It's just come out of the fridge. Let's put out some fires and I don't like it when it's getting a bit yellow. And, you know, you, you, I like it when, you know, it's a fresh jar of mayo. And you open up and it's got like that little swirl from the manu manufacturer on the top. And you don't, you're not a teaspoon or anything. You get a proper tablespoon and you just dig that sucker right in to that swirl. And you dig it out like the peak of a mountain. And you, you let it pass through your lips. And you can feel that little bit that's stuck to the underside of the spoon. And then the spoon's in, in your mouth entirely. You close your lips around it. Pull pull the cool spoon out. And you can feel the mayo sloshing around on top of your tongue. Around your teeth. <laughs> I, I don't know what else is. And then, and then you savour it. You close your eyes and you go, mmm. And you swallow that mayonnaise down. All in one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what else I could say about mayonnaise, guys, uh, unfortunately. I thought this was a PG stream. <laughs> Hellman's Mayo will go to hell? Yeah, Hellman's Mayo, definitely. Well, I actually don't, I don't know much about mayo. What other brands of mayo are there? I'd just like to, at this point, clarify that I've never eaten mayo straight out of the jar. <laughs> this is the most sexual talk about mayo I've ever heard. Benson's mayo? Is Benson's mayo a, a, a thing? Someone who... Have we got any mayonnaise connoisseurs in here? Somebody uh, somebody compare the two brands. Also, what's duck mayo like? Because you can make that in Stardew Valley. And I've wondered ever since. Duck mayonnaise? Is it, does it taste different? Are you sure you've never eaten out of a jar? No, I've never eaten mayo out of a jar. Sincerely. There's a thing some people do. Is it a UK thing? It's, it, and it's one of those things that you either love it or you hate it. I actually can't remember what the country is that does it. I have a hunch it's the UK and it's people from the US that don't like it. I've never done this. My older brother does this. All right. But when you get chips, French fries to my American friends, and you dip those into mayonnaise and you eat, you eat chips 
after dunking them into mayo. You guys heard of this? Now, some people love the sound of that and do that. And it's brilliant to them. And I'd love to hear any 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 uh, any uh, support for that. But other people, like, really, it proper grosses them out. It proper... Yeah, there you go. Look, look, look. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at chat. That's beautiful. It's common. Yes. Mm, and then also lots of grosses. I mean, I, I reckon I could swing either way. And that. Mayo is better than ketchup. For chips, maybe. Chips and mayo is god food. I mean, I do like mayo. Egg mayo sandwiches, amazing. Um, potato salad. Can't do a good potato salad without mayonnaise. Uh, what else is mayo good with? I mean, mayo in a burger. Is that weird? Mayo in a burger? I have, ma I have, I have mayo in burgers all the time. Salt, ketchup, and vinegar on fries only, please, T.Y. Yeah, those, are, they sound like some good chips. Try mayonnaise on a grilled cheese. So that is cheese on toast, right, to me, but in a sandwich form. Mayonnaise on a scotch egg. Oh, did anybody look at scotch eggs after yesterday? That was the other thing we were talking about, scotch eggs. Oh, I forgot at the start of today's stream. Scotch eggs, scotch egg reviews. You put chips and mayo in your burger. Yeah, that sounds good. Chips and a burger. I used to do that as a lot as a kid. Where did I lose the magic? That was a fun... You remember as a kid, you would do weird stuff like that? Combine things <laughs> in weird ways. Well, I guess most Canadians would find it gross, but my European friends show me and I really love mayonnaise in general. Yeah, I think uh, just in the States, people don't like mayonnaise much, do they? But we have it quite a lot around here. Tuna mayo sandwiches, they're good. Tuna mayonnaise with bits of sweet corn as well. That's a good sandwich right there. That's a hell of a sandwich. Salt and pepper it too. That is, that's a god tier sandwich. Just, just FYI. Especially if you have it with really nice bread, really nice fresh bread. It's another mayo dish. Well, our map completion ordering of this map has been all over the place. Oh my god, someone just said, I used to dip pineapple fingers, and then I thought the sentence was going to end with mayo, and I was going to be like, okay. No, he used to dip it in sweet chili hummus. I've never really had much ha hummus. Tuna and mayonnaise is the only mayo thing I'm willing to consider. Why? What's your aggression against mayonnaise, bro? What the hell, bro, dude? What's up, dog? Eat the mayonnaise, dog. Now I'm hungry. Oh, mayo on a doner. Mayo on a doner kebab. Obviously, yeah. Get some mayo on that. Definitely. It's gross, bro. Get that mayo out of my face, dog. <laughs> mayo or Miracle Whip. I don't know what Miracle Whip is. We don't have that here. Isn't that a sweet thing? Isn't that like marshmallows, but in... 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 Whip form. Isn't that that? Why do your te teams always turn into talking about foods? Now I need to order food. Because people were asking me about mayonnaise. What do you want? Ask me about Guild Wars. We'll talk about Guild Wars. But someone was asking me about mayo. I'm going to indulge the people. This is what they want. All right? You can guide this, people. Someone says I always use salad cream rather than mayo. See, I don't like that. I don't like salad cream much at all. Salad cream is one of those funny things, though, that, again, Americans find really weird because it sounds weird, doesn't it? Salad cream. It's like we... we it's like, what, what even is that? <laughs> um, it sounds horrible, but it's it's good. Which Guild Wars 2 food is my favourite, then? My favourite Guild Wars 2 food is winter berry seaweed salad because it gives me plus 6% damage while moving, which is the top DPS in a game if I can keep doing WASND. And also, it's rather cheap and lasts 45 minutes. Salad fingers. I haven't seen that for years. This is now a Nutella stream. So that's something I think people would be more willing to eat straight out of the jar. But again, I've never done that either. 
just a spoonful of Nutella. That's what people do, right? What's the best Nutella disc dish you can do? Deep fried Nutella? We talked about deep fried butter earlier. Marmite. See, I don't know. See, Marmite I haven't tried for years. And I want to. I used to hate it, but I, I don't know. I want to try it. I want to see what it's like. Marmite is best on toast, isn't it? Nine out of ten, you eat Nutella straight out of the jar. I did that a lot as a kid. The off-brand versions are better than regular Nutella, though. Isn't there like a hey? I don't know. Isn't there like a hazelnut Nutella? Is that a thing? Am I wrong about that? What is? Because I think I've tried that before, and that was really nice. Nutella with banana crepes. So a crepe to my UK friends is just what we have as pancakes, like on Pancake Tuesday. Unless it's like a Scotch pancake. I just like crepes. I like pancakes with um, sugar and uh, lemon. Delicious. That's all I really have of them. Lemon juice. Sif lemon juice, specifically. You just described half of Nutella, man. Oh, it's always hazelnut. Is that what the nut is in reference to, or Nutella? Like, it sort of dawned on me in the middle of us talking about it, so. This is actually amazing. We've now gone on for maybe 10 minutes talking purely about food. <laughs> While I faff about incredibly inefficiently. We're 80% done, though. 80%. It's not bad. It's not too shabab. I don't get it though, because it's chocolate, right? So what's the what's the relationship there? How much? I mean, nut is obviously not the the entire focus. No. So this is where, if we go into that cave, we do well. Right, and we can finish this one really easily and quickly. Have I made any progress with my reshade preset? No, I I lost all enthusiasm for it. Really, I really did. I uh, I fiddled with it a bit, but I just didn't get anywhere near the old settings I had, and <sighs> always more work. I don't know. It just depressed me because I knew it was so many hours of fucking about and fiddling with it to ever get back to anywhere near what I had, and I, I don't know. I just thought, mm, do you know what? I think I'm done with it. I've, I've wasted too many hours messing around with reshade at this point. So I, I, I turned it off, really. Um, so yeah, I don't know whether you will see reshade on my streams or videos. I don't know. It might it might be the end of it now, guys. And I really did like it. I liked having reshade and ICM on. I, I sort of regret turning that stuff off for Season 5. I regret even further that I never made a satisfactory backup of the stuff. Flail, you should try making some cherry cordials. Tempering chocolate is easy yet challenging. Dude, you talked to me this about this the other day. What what do you think, Twitch chat? Is uh is is a uh, Guild Wars buddy in chat there? He made the the face cam by the way. Uh is is he right that I should try making cordials, or should we instead continue eating mayonnaise straight out of the jar? Hey, restless, good to see you too. Welcome, welcome. Hope development's been going well. Oh my god, we've already been going two hours. Uh, I suppose that was... Uh... So listen, guys. Um, Next uh, weekend, or next weekend streams, hopefully I will have done Ascalon and maybe even some Shiver Peaks. We will see. I really hope that I have made some progress. Because uh, it would be nice to get back to some streams that lots of people want to watch, you know, instead of just sort of some map completion-y things. And ones that I can advertise and we can push the stuff up. I mean, this has been a cool stream, though. We had, what, like, two donations? We got a Patreon sub. We got a T3 sub. We got a couple of smaller subs. It's been pretty good, guys. It has been awesome. You guys have been very, very generous for the size of today's stream as well. So thank you very, very, very much. Um, but I will try to have as much of this done as possible because, let's be real, map completion... Mayo out of the jar is not only unhealthy and extreme, but also indescribably disgusting. Nike, I'm guessing you weren't here earlier when we were describing the the, uh, the experience and what was so amazing about it. 
The only thing more amazing than what I described earlier is when it's slightly old mayo. Now hear me out, hear me out. When it's slightly old and it's going a little bit more yellow. When it's going a bit yellow and it gets that added character right there. Okay, now I I'm just straight up trying to disgust you all now. <laughs> Oh, we got a sub. Thank you, Restless. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome, welcome. KS Somba. I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, what's more disgusting than just eating mayo straight out of the jar? What's like, but also fat. Do you know what I mean? Because this is like an overweight kind of thing. Eating a block of cheese straight up. I think that eating mayo out of the jar is worse than a block of cheese straight up. There must be a video of that on someone. Oh my god, I just had a flashback and a half. I used to watch this guy on YouTube. He must have been like 250, 260 pounds. A huge guy, right? Big guy. No, sorry, even bigger than 250 or 260. Possibly closing in on 300 pounds, right? A huge guy. And he was a kid. He was like a little kid. I I implore, I recommend you guys go off and look at a lot of stuff, all right? I'm about to close the stream down, so... You will have you will have this memory, right? Please do this. Type into YouTube pizza roll challenge. It's this kid that would do like food challenges. He was like maybe 17 or 18 at the time, I guess. He was huge, sweaty, spotty, unshaven, greasy, long, slightly curly hair. And he did this video of eating like a hundred pizza rolls. And the sounds, Nike's description there of indescribably disgusting. It's an amazing video. It is one of the grossest things you can watch on YouTube. Trust me, guys. Go watch it. It's amazing. Just listen to this kid eating these pizza rolls. It is awful and it's hilarious. And he also did a video, and this is what I just got the flashback of. He did a video of eating like a chicken in a can, which was also incredibly great. A chicken in a can. Canned chicken. Who eats canned chicken? Man, I haven't thought of or seen that for years. There you go, aka Fastback. Everybody click that link. The pizza roll challenge. And that's the stream over. So go do that right here, right now. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Map completion, fun as always. Um, I'm going to go get some stuff done. Uh, it's been wonderful. Lots of fun. We didn't get too judgy today. Really enjoyed today's stream. Thank you for all the support and stuff, guys. It was great to see some old faces too. And, uh, well, I will see you on the upcoming Saturday. Hopefully we've got some cool videos. And who knows, maybe even tomorrow they might have had an announcement. Who knows? All right, guys. I'll see you later. I'll be on the pizza roll video.